Well, I have this side exposed. The next thing that I want to make sure I do is plug in both the flex cable for the backlight and the flex cable for the keyboard itself. Sometimes this little flex cable for the backlight gets stuck underneath when you seat the keyboard. That's okay. You just want to take the pointy end of your black stick and gently work it underneath the loop until you can get the cable back on this side of the top case. If my latch wasn't open already, I want to make sure this part that I guess is kind of a, a peach or skin tone is open. And now I'm going to put my black stick underneath the flex cable for the backlight and push down with my forefinger. That gives me a little bit more stability when I'm seating the cable. So you want the cable to go in nice and straight. And I just close that flesh colored latch there to hold it in place. If this was a um, brand new keyboard that you got, on the back of the flex cable for the keyboard there would be a piece of tape that you need to expose. So you just want to take that off. Again, I just peel back on the piece of plastic covering the top case, I'm sorry, the trackpad. I want to make sure that my latch is open. Uh, I need to slide the keyboard connector in. The keyboard connector normally goes in a lot easier than the backlight connector. And then I want to press my latch down so it's nice and firm. And then press the piece of plastic down on top of the trackpad. So that's pretty easy. Now I'm going to reseat my EMI shielding here. You'll notice that there is a piece of cap tape that's over the keyboard connector. If you have torn that in any way, you want to go ahead and replace that so that connector is nice and steady. And now I just take my black stick to run along the edges of the shielding here to get it nice and seated. And you'll see my one screw that is exposed right there. I'm going to take my piece of shielding that I set aside and I'm going to cover that guy back up. Now moving on to the other side. I'm just replacing all those screws that were taken out here. And now I'm going to reseat my shielding on this side. Now it was actually intentional that I started with the, I guess you'd call that the right side of the keyboard first. Um, because the little tab here on the shielding does need to cross over the other side. And again, I have two screws that are exposed there, so I'm going to go ahead and cover them back up. Cool. And now you've just got to button it all back up again, so I'm going to move my top case to the side for a second, bring the computer back. And I'm going to seat the top case connector onto the logic board and make sure it's secure with a piece of cap tape. And then I seat the front of the top case first and then it kind of lays itself back there. Now remember we do have the five clips here so I'm starting with the clip on the um, left hand side of the machine and I got a nice pop out of that. And I got a nice pop out of the one on the far side here. but. I've got three more clips to go here. Um, what I find is easiest, if they don't just clip in place right away, is I want to turn my machine to the side. And you'll know that they didn't clip in place too, not only by the sound, but there'll be a little bit of separation between the top and the bottom case. If I had just pushed on that, I'm going to end up damaging the optical drive, or at least denting the bottom case where the optical drive is. I don't think that's a great solution. So I'm going to take my black stick, and I'm going to put it right underneath where the clip is internally. So you have to kind of visualize where this is. And I'm going to give it a little bit of pressure from the top case as well. And great, we got one there, we got one there, and my third one there. So those are all nice and popped in, and you'll see that there's no seam there and there's no damage done to the optical drive. Both key. We like to not injure the machines while we're repairing them. 
And I'm going to go ahead and put in the side screws here. And the rear screws. And the side screws on the left side. Okay, close the machine, turn it upside down. I'm going to start with my two T6s in the RAM bay. And I have long fillets on the back. two screws in the battery bay. You do want to make sure that you didn't mix up these screws in the battery bay with these screws from the outside of the machine. While they look deviously similar, the ones in the battery bay are actually a little bit shorter. So if you put in the screws from the side into the battery bay, uh, you might notice that you have issues with the latch. Now I take my RAM cover, see it in here. And what you can't really see from your end is there actually is liquid damage on the bottom of this machine. It's one of the reasons I was hoping I'd find some liquid on the keyboard, but unfortunately they just set it down on a spill of hot coffee. And put my battery in, and we're good. So if you just replaced your keyboard, you should find now that it is nice and not sticky wonderful uh, and now you just turn it on and make sure that your backlight works and that all of your keys type and you're good to go